Not many people can do this. This is Sam Creasy. He's a 24-year-old fine artist who creates paintings from photo-edited collages. Sam is just one of the young artists drawn to London because of its opportunities for creatives. He moved to the capital from Brighton in January. And I felt quite disconnected from everything that was going on in our capital city from an art perspective anyway, because so many of events and private views and exhibitions and my friend's exhibition openings and things like that were all kind of happening in London. London has a rich history of art, both the traditional and the modern. Public art spending is 15 times greater per head in the capital compared with other English regions, according to a report from the Arts Council England. Artists like Sam move to London in search of opportunity. It is just a fact of life that so many of these cities and other places that aren't London don't have contemporary art galleries or centres of contemporary art. I felt myself almost migrating to the city before I'd actually made the decision to migrate myself in terms of my home. This is not your typical home. Priced at around £400 a month, exempt from council tax, with all bills paid for, Sam lives in this former day centre for the elderly. The property is part of a guardianship scheme which offers a temporary solution to developers of a building that want to avoid squatters and individuals looking for a cheap place to stay. Most of the original furniture and utilities are still present. Sam is content. It's spacious and conveniently doubles up as a studio, though he admits it can get a little cold in the winter. The landlord pays the bills for this place. Like the heating's turned off, so it was a bit cold kind of when I first moved here, but now that it's spring, you know, like I'm sat here in a t-shirt, I'm perfectly comfortable. And yeah, once you move past that you're not in, you know, a house with carpets and what you're used to when you've grown up kind of thing, it's actually can be quite an interesting sort of place to live. I know quite a, other, a few other artists who live in places like this. Damon Owen is one such artist. Like Sam, it is the only way he can afford to live and paint in London. And as an artist, he finds it difficult to stay afloat. So you create an environment that is elite. So people who can afford to be in these positions and not have to dedicate their labour in other places are really fortunate. And it's on the people from low-income backgrounds that will inevitably suffer. Because you have to take responsibility of yourself. At the end of the day, I think if you're determined, then you will do things. I think London doesn't help the situation, but we can't put all the blame onto London. But London's rental and property prices have skyrocketed over the past decade. This worries Georgina Street of Camden Collective, a charity that promotes creative co-working space in the capital. I think that we already see startups, young creatives, young artists being pushed out of London. If I was someone who was looking for affordable workspace, I wouldn't be basing myself in London. I'd be going somewhere like Bristol, and I think we're seeing more and more people thinking that way. Um, and we have exactly that in Camden Town and Euston. You know, it's, it's not affordable, it's not viable. The paradox of London for Sam is that it is the best UK city for artists, but also a city in which he can barely afford to live. In order to survive in London, Sam sometimes works 40 hours a week delivering groceries. He says this has a detrimental impact on his art. My anxiety around being a successful artist or trying to be a successful artist in London is giving yourself enough time to make the work you want to make, but then earning enough money to pay for your studio and to eat and to actually stay healthy and have some kind of mental stability. But Sam draws inspiration from the energy of London for his work. Obviously, since, since moving to London, I've tried as, much, as hard as I can to make my work reflect upon the city a bit more and kind of the things that are going on the, in the city at this given time. It's just experiencing everyday life from the, windows, from the window of a Waitrose van, driving around different parts of the city. It's actually proved quite beneficial to just thought process that I'm having and the type of paintings that I'm making and the characters that are in those paintings and stuff like that. You just have to embrace the kind of fluffy poetic nature of art sometimes because it does if you engage with it long enough you can realize ways in which you can hold up a mirror to society and how you can read it there is hope for people like sam this is the founder of the world's first art agency at a public display her company has put on outside a busy london station the agency helps emerging artists establish themselves i don't understand why visual artists don't have a stronger influence in our society um, we are incredibly passionate with the idea that artists should be visible by everyone but also should inspire everyone 
So something like this, being outside the Eustace Station is very special for us because obviously you have over 100,000 people passing Eustace Station and then they get exposed to art. And that specific show is a response to the inspiration we get from the city and also the challenges we have for the city. Two weeks after meeting Sam, his painting is almost finished and is to be included in the exhibition outside Euston Station. He is now MT Art Agency's newest and youngest artist, which means his studio costs will be paid for and his work will be presented to galleries and prospective buyers. His painting was chosen for the exhibition because it reflects the hustle and bustle of the station. I actually titled the painting The Rat Race after the kind of the cliché sort of term that's kind of thrown around about people kind of swarming around the city almost like locusts to sort of eventually what seeming is like, seems like no avail. Sam is an important artist to help out, according to the agency, because his work reflects issues that London is currently facing. When I met Sam, I was incredibly impressed, um, both by the narrative of his works, like they are completely tapping on all the challenges that we live through as, and, as people who live in cities, and you know, the rise of gangs, uh, but also um, the rise of brands into our everyday culture. So it's very, very smart and how he tackled the narrative directly. The second thing is actually a personality, like, um, you know, Sam is doing a part-time job to still make it as an artist and um, works on like three hours sleep um, and is incredibly passionate about doing what he's doing. And I, I'm very positive about his future. I think realistically, anyone with talent and works hard in my head has very high chances of making it. Sam was forced to move out of the day centre and now lives in a former basketball court where he continues to produce work. What happens if people like Sam are driven out of the capital? Perhaps if arts truly does hold up a mirror to society, then it's important to protect those gifted and able to reflect what goes on in the city, or rat race, like London. <laughs>